welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we're creating a watercolor sketch of fresh basil. So what you see on screen is exactly what we're going to be creating together. This tutorial is perfect for beginners because we are keeping things super loose. Nothing's really precise here. It's meant to have that sketchy watercolor look. So we're changing up the style just a little bit. We're using my paid set of watercolor illustration brushes, but if you have another set that you would like to use, it's just going to alter the style a little bit, but you'll still be able to follow the same instructions. As always, the color palette for this project is entirely free. There's a link right in the video description so you can download and install that and I'll place a link to those brushes down there as well. So I'm going to create a brand new document that's 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels at 300 dpi and then we'll get started. Okay, I've got my document all created and we're going to set a background color first. So just tap on your layers, hit background color and you're going to choose the yellow. So it's the third one up at the top. And now we're going to go grab a source image to base our sketch off of. So I'm going to head over to Unsplash. And if you're familiar with other tutorials of mine, you know I highly recommend always using Chrome for your downloads. But for Unsplash, it's one of those rare situations where I actually recommend Safari for downloading images onto your iPad. It just works a little little quicker than with Chrome. So I'm going to open the website Unsplash in Safari. Okay, I am on Unsplash's website and right in the search bar, I'm just going to type in basil plant, hit search, and then it's actually the second one right up here at the top that we're going to be using, but feel free to scroll through these and grab any other source image that you would like. But for this tutorial, I am using this top one. I'll leave a link in the video description to this one as well. So what you wanna do is tap on it and then hit the little arrow down for downloading and then hit download. So once you do that, it will save it onto your iPad. And now we need to bring it into our photos folder. So in order to do that, you're going to hit the little down arrow right here and then tap on the download. So this will open it in its own window and then hit the arrow up icon over here and then you can hit save image right here. So now that's saved to my photos folder. So now I can easily bring it into Procreate. So I'm going to head back into Procreate now. All right, once we're into Procreate, we need to go grab that image from our photos folder and bring it into our document so we can work off of it. So hit your wrench icon up here, go to add, and then hit insert a photo and go grab it from your photos folder. I've got the plant brought in. I'm going to make it just a little bit larger. Not too much larger. That's actually a pretty good size the way it is. Okay, so once you have it the size that you want it, you can just hit the cursor icon up here and that will deselect it. And now we can start establishing our sketch layer. So I'm going to reduce the opacity of this. That way I can see what I'm doing on top of it a little bit better. So I'm just going to tap on the end and bring the opacity down to like 50%. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to switch my color to my darkest green, which is the very first one right here. and we're going to zoom up on this. We're going to create a brand new layer above our template layer. So hit the plus icon. We're going to rename this one basil outline. And we're going to grab our sketching pencil brush from this watercolor illustration brush set. I'm going to use a size of 6% for this. And I'm going to come around and you can be as precise or as loose as you would like to here. There's a lot of freedom here to make this your own. You can either use the photo as a guide or as something you wanna precisely copy. So I'm going to speed up the video and then I will be back. Okay, I've got my outline all drawn in. So now if I turn off my base template, you can see that outline. And now we're going to draw our planter at the bottom. And I'm going to simplify this a little bit. This one's kind of like a planter and a planter. So I'm going to create a brand new layer, label this one planter outline. And I'm going to grab this kind of red color right here. And I'm going to trace the planter, the first planter. And then for the base part of this first planter, I'm just going to extend it all the way down to the base of the second planter. This is kind of funky to me, so I'm, I wanna leave this other one out. So I'm just going to keep it to just this one and just follow that line down. I'm going to add a little bit of a curve right here to give it a little bit more dimension. All right, so now let's see what that looks like. And there's our basil inside of a planter. So the next thing we're going to do is start shading in our basil and creating that watercolor sketch look. So I'm coming back to my template layer and I'm going to create a brand new layer right above it. And I'm going to grab this middle green color 
and my medium paint round brush. And now what I'm going to do is just paint inside the lines or as well as I can. It's definitely gonna go out of the lines in some areas and that's totally fine, that's part of the style. So if that happens, that's what it's supposed to look like. So I'm just going to color in and once you get to the cluster of leaves down here where it's kind of confusing, you can feel free to turn your template layer back on. That way you know where the background is and where the leaves are. But for the most part, you should be able to just shade in wherever your outline is. So I'm just going to color in every single part. And you can see this brush naturally has areas of high transparency and low transparency. So it's all going to play into that watercolor sketch look in the end. And if you leave your brush, your stylus, on the screen and you continue to paint, you'll just continue painting that texture. But whenever you lift the stylus up and then you go back down, when you paint over areas you've already painted, you're going to get these areas of wet on dry. And that also adds to that effect. So if you see that happening, that actually looks really cool. So I would leave it. So I tend to leave my stylus down for a bunch of areas and then I'll lift it up for other areas as well. So kind of just mix it up. All right, once we have our base paint layer all established, actually I'm going to label this one base paint. Now it's time to put in our shaded areas. So we're not going for a realism look right here, we're going for a sketch, a watercolor sketch. So make sure you keep that in mind before you go too far with your details. It can get really easy to do that the more that you're working, the more that you're shading. So just a heads up. So what I'm going to do is create a brand new layer right above it. This one's just going to be shadows. And now we're going to turn off our base paint layer, that way we can see what's going on behind it a lot better. And you should be able to see your areas of light and dark pretty clearly. So on your shadows layer, you're just going to come wherever there's dark areas, you're just going to paint in those areas and you're going to leave the areas that are lighter untouched. So it's going to be that sketchy style again. So feel free to keep it nice and loose. It doesn't have to stay in the lines. I'm just going into places where it's really dark and giving myself a little bit of paint right here. And let me show you really quickly what this looks like as you get going. So now if I turn on my base paint layer and turn off my template layer, you can see those extra areas of shading start giving the sketch a little bit of dimension and that makes it a lot more interesting. So I'm going to come through the entire plant and paint in those areas of shadows. I think I've got all my shadows now, so let's preview this. I've got my base paint layer turned on now and my shadows layer, and I'm just kind of looking at everything. And there are areas that are a bit darker than others, like down here, these areas are definitely darker. So I can just paint in an extra layer wherever I feel like I need a little bit of extra darkness just to show that this is the darkest area of my piece. You don't have to do this, but if you wanted to add in a little extra detail, you could do that to give it a, just a little bit more dimension. Okay, so one last thing that we wanna to do to add just a little bit more detail and make this look like it's really basil is we wanna add a few details to some of the leaves, especially the larger leaves. It will make the eye immediately kind of add those lines to all the other smaller leaves once it starts picking up a few of those leaves. So if I just turn on my template layer, I can turn off my base paint and my shadows and I'm going to come back to my basil outline and you can put this on its own layer if you want to, but since it's going to be the same width and it's going to follow right along with the outline, I'm leaving it on my basal outline layer. I'm going to return back to my dark green color. I'm going to grab my sketching pencil and just on some of these larger ones, like I can see some of these lines and I can even make the opacity a little greater so I can see them better. And I'm just going to follow some of these lines down on the leaves so we can very clearly see that this is a basil plant. So here's one right here. Some of these are gonna be more detailed than others. Sometimes you only need to put in a line and other times you're going to have to add a few lines to make it really obvious. Okay, let's take a look at our details. 
And anywhere you feel like it could probably use a little extra, you can add those in too. I'm just going to add a few corresponding details here because I think it looks awkward without it. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now let's turn on our base paint, our shadows, and all that's looking really nice now. And the next thing we're going to do is paint in our planter down here. So we're going to come to our basil outline, create a brand new layer right above it. This one's going to be called planter paint. I'm going to grab the red color right here in my medium paint round brush, and then just paint this in. So this top part's going to be one full stroke with the stylus on screen before I lift it up. And then I'm going to do another one down here and this one's going to be another one of those full stroke paints. Okay, and then I'm going to paint the inside of this and just go over it a few times to darken it up. To add just a little bit more dimension to the lip of this, I'm going to create a brand new layer and keep my dark red selected. I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'm going to keep my medium paint round brush selected, but I'm just going to give myself a little bit of extra color right here. And then I'm going to grab my smudge tool right here and I can select one of my brushes to use as a smudge brush. And I'm going to grab my spot bleed brush and I can push the paint out just a little bit to soften it, but this will give my planter a little bit of depth. And let's see how that looks. I'm going to reduce the opacity a little bit because that's kind of strong. So I'm coming down to 60% and then change my blend mode to multiply. And let's turn this on and off. And you can see that does give me a little bit more dimension right there. I'm going to reduce the opacity down just a little further. Let's go down to 50%. See how that looks. All right. I definitely want it there. I just don't want it overpowering. The last thing we want to do is add in a shadow down here to complete the look. So I'm going to come back to my basal outline layer, create a brand new layer above it. I'm going to grab my darkest gray color, which it doesn't really look like there's a color here, but there's definitely one to the left of the red. And I'm going to grab my soft wash brush. And right down here, I'm just going to paint kind of like an oval. And then I'm going to paint a darker area right here. And now we're going to smudge this. So grab your smudge tool, and this time I'm going to grab my soft wash brush and push this out a little bit. Soften up these edges. If you stipple with it, you can also get some nice soft effects that way too. Transition this darker area into the lighter area a little bit better. Stipple. Obviously that's really dark and we don't want it to be that dark. So let's reduce the opacity. I'm gonna come down to 50%, I think will look nice. Yeah. So the next thing we need to do is erase away where the overlap is happening on our planter because that just looks terrible. So first let's label this one bottom shadow. And a really easy way to erase that away is you wanna come back to your planter paint layer, tap on the layer thumbnail, choose select. Go back to your layers, return to your bottom shadow layer. We're going to grab our eraser and you want to come to your airbrushing category right here and come to hard brush. And we're just going to increase the size all the way up and erase away this area. And I do this a few times because sometimes there'll be little remnants because just the way the watercolor is. And then once you've done this a few times, you can deselect and now you can see that it's only outside of the planter, that shadow. So last thing, it's totally optional if you wanna add it in. I love adding in just a little bit of lettering to label what we've created here. So I'm going to come all the way to the top, create a brand new layer and just label this one lettering. And with this brush set, this watercolor illustration brush set, if you grab your round liner brush, it actually works pretty well as a sketchy lettering brush. I'm going to reduce the size of this down to 5% and write out basil. And to kind of go along with the style here, I'm going to draw over my lettering one more time and that will give it kind of a sketchier look. And then I'm just going to add in the word fresh right above it. Okay, I'm gonna reduce the size of this. This feels a little bit large. 
So that is how to create a watercolor sketch style of a fresh basil plant. Once again, links to everything mentioned in this tutorial right in the video description, including the brush set, the color palette, and that photo reference that we used. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new tutorials just like this one in the future. For more Procreate tutorials and freebies, head on over to my site, every-tuesday.com. You can also find me over on Instagram. My handle is every Tuesday. If you try this out and post it there, I would love it if you tag me. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.